Welcome to People to People. I'm Micah Mater. Let's get started. Chicago is open. City streets are busy. Traffic's back. Restaurants and shops are bustling. But as the number of variant cases starts to creep up, we have to ask when it comes to the end of COVID, are we there yet? Well, Dr. Jeffrey Sterling of Simcoe, Illinois, Managed Preventative Care is with us again. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Always good to see you safe. Yes, and, and you too. You always have such good advice for us. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that the masks are off. Chicago's open. You know, do you think the masks came off too soon and why? Well, stop me if you've heard this before, but we, in fact, have actually lived through this before. And the answer to your question simply lies in who the we are in this conversation. Remember, we're in the summer, and what's happening now is in large part due to the fact that a lot of people have been vaccinated, but we're also in a summer pause. And we should remember this from last year. We should also remember that what we do now will determine the severity of what presents in the fall. So to some extent, the masks, yes, have come off too soon. We have not sufficiently vaccinated enough people to develop this level of comfort. And I think that the relative consideration that the rates have slowed down have given us a level of comfort that perhaps is unjustified because if I told you the 600,000 people have died across the United States and now we're at a rate that's only projecting out to about 100,000 people over the next year would die, well, that's still horrible. And that's kind of what we're leaving behind, the notion that we're so relieved that things are getting better that we still don't see the danger in front of us. So we were a little premature in your eyes of doing this. Tell us a little bit about this Delta variant, which uh, Dr. Fauci is saying could be a lot worse than the original, original COVID-19. But once again, um, past is um, prologue, and the truth of the matter is that, you know, it's the Delta variant that is showing, is about to become the predominant strain here in the United States. If you look to the rest of the world where there are burgeoning cases now in Africa, Brazil, India, over in the um, UK and the European Union, et cetera, and we're open on our end and we're traveling to those places, this variant, which still, thankfully, is susceptible to the virus, the truth of the matter is that they got next and what's going to happen is related to the extent to which we go and import this more virulent and more easily um, acquirable um, strain over here. So once again, we're kind of cooking, preparing the table for what's going to happen in the summer. And the sad part about this really is that the decisions that we've made are based on real ca risk calculation and risk tolerance. And for the vast majority of people, even those that have been vaccinated, there's a level of comfort that even with the pro presence of the emerging Delta variant, that I'm going to be okay. But what ends up being lost is that the vulnerable, the still vulnerable, are the ones that are going to be left behind. And as the death count continues on, it's going to be those individuals. So the Delta variant is just who's got next. Mm -hmm. And if this thing continues to percolate in other parts of the world, then new mutants, new variants will continue to proliferate and be imported back into the United States such that this thing will never really end if we don't take a special care to get immunized. So you believe even with the vaccinations, we could all be susceptible to it. I mean, I know for a fact I had a family member who was vaccinated, got COVID, showed no symptoms though. But does that mean that she can still pass it on to others? Yes, it does. And, and even more importantly, as much as we know about the virus at this point, people need to remember that we don't know very much about the long-term effects of the virus. So death isn't the only option. There's a degree of debilitation that is not yet presented simply because enough time hasn't passed so that we know what the long-term effects are. So even if you're asymptomatic in the short term, this pathogen, which doesn't just affect your lungs, it actually affects your entire body, could have devastating consequences 10 or 20 years from now, and it really would be prudent for us to continue to social distance and mask when we can't socially distance or until and unless we're vaccinated so that we aren't exposing ourselves to, at this point, unknown consequences decades down the line. Are you still wearing your mask every day? 
Well, once again, I follow the recommendations to a T. Um, there are circumstances in which you should be rewarded for being immunized. If you're outdoors, for example, the rate of transmission is negligible enough that you don't have to wear a mask. But if you can't socially distance, if you're mixing with individuals from different households, um, and if you're engaged in any significant type of indoor activity, you really should still be masking. So this is all about risk reduction. And even if it's only one in a thousand, if you're talking about hundreds of thousands of individuals, the number of cases are still going to be significant. And that's kind of what we're up against. So if you're risk averse, you're gonna have a lower incidence and just somebody out there still is going to get it. But more than anything else, as you pointed out, there are lots of stories coming out in the news right now where in the workplaces, People, there are these outbreaks, and the people that end up sick and end up dying are now increasingly the people that chose not to get immunized. And the people that have been immunized may be asymptomatic. They may have minor infections. But right now, we're at a point to where we're seeing the consequences of people's choices. So the best advice that we can give you is that, folks, we are not close to what we would have described as herd immunity. The fact of the matter is that there has been very good penetration in the elderly. In Chicago, for example, 71% of people over 65 years old have been immunized. But overall, that number is only 54. Wow. And that's skewed because so many people who are institutionalized and elderly have been vaccinated. So amongst the general population, there are a lot of folks, more than half of us, are still walking around in this reopened environment without having been vaccinated. And that is a significant risk, and we need to treat it as such. Definitely. Please move with purpose because this thing is not yet over. All right, Dr. Jeffrey Sterling, we appreciate it. Be safe, be well. You do the same. Thanks. Good being with you. Thanks. You can find Dr. Sterling online at SimcoIllinois.com.